I know that I hate that. But I still will. For the safety of people around us and for ourselves. And some people may feel irritated when you come in and measure your temperature. Uh, our temperature usually normal is under 98. Uh, it's for our safety. It's annoying, but uh, for ourselves and for other people around us, we have to obey the law. So we can stay safe, stay healthy. Today I have a uh, very <coughs> interesting subject. I have thought about it for a long time, but I did not know how to share the English. But uh, finally, I figured it out. <clears throat> I think uh, Peter will appreciate this expression. Jigsaw puzzle. I wonder why I found this. And, but I found this is very interesting, jigsaw puzzle uh, games. A discovery of uh, Timothy, 1 Timothy chapter 1, 3 and 4, the original meaning. Uh, you may say it's important, you may say it's not important, but to me this is very, very important. <coughs> The scripture, the truth in the Bible, is for saving souls. In order to heal illnesses or sickness or a kind of disease, you have to a special drug or medicine, specially uh, specialized in healing or cure certain disease, a special drug. I think those uh, doctors know that they have to memorize what kind of disease, what kind of infection, what kind of uh, sickness. Like right now, people are looking for a cure to destroy this pandemic, COVID-19. If someone can di 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 uh, discover a little leaf, or some kind of leaf from some kind of vegetable or plant or whatever, they can immediately cure COVID-19. I think this person who discovered this will be very, very rich. He will be billionaire, I think, because all over the world will come to buy that special effective drug or medicine to cure COVID-19. We know that COVID-19 can only kill the body that may live 150 or 200. But the truth in the Bible is able to save the soul that will live forever. That's why you have to have the truth as it was written to be effective, to cure the soul, not be damaged or destroyed by sin. This is very important. So we are very th fortunate and thankful to God that we discover this. One impo important job of an evangelist is to stop Gnostics, Gnostic in the church. You have to stop. It's an important job of an evangelist. Gnostic generate questioning. Questioning generate disorder. And disorder will make devoted people fall away from salvation. That's why it's important. Usually, devoted people like to be in a place where there's peace, no quarreling, no disorder. Everybody love each other peacefully together. Gnostic generate the opposite. You will create trouble in the church. That's why the evangelist is responsible 
to stop command these people to stop. This is a surprise discovery, discovery for me. Even right now, I'm sharing the scripture. But I did not know how or why I got it. Why maybe I know? Because God wants us to know the truth. So we can say, can be saved. Our soul can be saved forever. This is a forever life. <coughs> Yesterday, there's this uh, most recent encounter. When I finished work over here, set up this thing, I was leaving, I opened the gate. <coughs> when I was closing the gate, there this gentleman walked by. I thought he was a Chinese gentleman. Or oh, I because he looked at the building, looked like he interested. So I tried to talk to him. And he speaks English. He said, I'm not Chinese. I'm Korean. Then immediately he introduced himself as a retired preacher. A pastor, retired pastor from Palmer's Church. He showed me his personal business card with a church building, very beautiful building, 30th Avenue and College Point in that area, a big church building, promised church. So we stayed there, chat a little bit. He was very <coughs> enthusiastic, talking about his carpet track, he pulled out his car and carpet track. But I, as usual, I, I was curious. I said, can you tell me the beginning word in your Korean Bible about John 3.16? John 3.16. When I asked about, do you know the, what is the first word in your Korean Bible? Somehow, he immediately got irritated. He sounds angry. Uh, <coughs> and he told me he's very, very good in Bible. So far, all these Korean preachers, pastors, reverend or whatever, about 20 some years ago, there this preacher from uh, Northeastern Fusun close to Shenyang. A Korean preacher came here to do fundraising to help establish a Korean speaking church building in Fushun. There are a lot of uh, Korean Chinese. Here we have Chinese American. Over there, they have Korean Chinese. But uh, because in the Bible, we as the Church of Christ, we cannot participate in helping them. But in order to <coughs> keep the friendship, I figured out a way to do it. Indirectly, to, uh, I, I guide him, take him to visit a few Korean churches around the area. And that was the time that I get to meet a few Korean preachers. And right next door to me, uh, where I live, Zio you know, eh? a Korean church. The pastor, he told me he's Bible expert. It looked like all the Korean pastor sounds, at least sounds, when the way they talk to me and the way they get angry. I asked him about the first word in the Korean Bible, what is the first word in John 3, 16? Everybody, everyone will get angry. Because they thought that was a uh, very, how we say that, look down question. You think I'm a dummy? Do not know the first word in John 3, 16? Think like, they can kind of attitude, right, see? They will get angry with me. And I said, well, because 
I know Korean Bible translated from the Chinese Bible. He said, okay, I'll tell you. John 3, 16, the first word is God. God so loved the world. I said, I just want to verify because that is the Chinese Bible sense. John 3, 6, 16 starts with the word God and then God so loved the world. Because I, some people told me the Korean Bible translated from the Chinese. So I like to verify with you because you have been all lifetime, lifetime preacher. <coughs> and he said, okay. The gentle section starts with the God, God so loved the world. I said, in case you want to know all English Bible translation and the Greek original text, uh, original text Greek, they all start with a four, not with a God. In case you want to know, he immediately walked away from me. He does not want to talk to me. And he take he piece the cup back and <laughs> give it back to him. <laughs> he wanted it back. He does not want to waste his uh, piece of cup. See that? Very thin, thrifty, right? See, that's what you call thrifty. Does not want to waste a piece of cup. I give it to him. But suddenly I have this thought. It's horrible. Some to me, suddenly I think all the pastors that I have met in this area, they, each one of them, they all think they are Bible expert. Nobody can tell, tell them they have anything wrong in knowing the Bible. They all think they, each one of them, in their own way, they are perfect. Nobody can teach them anything or share with them anything. Especially when it comes to John 3, 16, everybody knows exactly what he's saying. God so loved the world, things like that. But he started talking to me. Unlike myself, when I was a teenager, start learning to believe Jesus. I saw my teachers, they go to different denomination church. They all in their hand with a Bible, same Bible, same publisher. Chinese Bible. But why they go to all these different kind of churches? Why are they different? They all claim, they all say they believe according to the Bible. They believe according to what says in the Bible. Then in my teenager mind, how can this be? How can everybody according to this same Bible be so different? So many different. And at the time, we have a class called Joy Picture. What to what? America, uh, do we have in American school? Joy Picture. The teacher have a picture posted out there and all the students copy the picture, okay? So do we have that? You don't have this here? You draw a picture, every, every student draw the picture. When you have a picture of a horse, all the students supposed to draw a what? A horse. Maybe not as good looking as <laughs> the original picture that the, the teacher posted. G, can you, can you draw the same picture, exactly the same? I don't, nobody actually, nobody can do it exactly. But you still should at least look like a horse, right? But let's imagine, some look like mice. It all look like a mice, or a dog, a turtle. And they say they are the same. They all joy from that picture. How is it possible? Hey, what's it? How is it possible? My teenager mind, I cannot understand. So I promise God, I pray, Lord, if you help me to be a preacher, I will preach what says in the Bible, really what says in the Bible. And that, that can count it as my dream. So by the grace of God, my dream fulfilled. And I never think when come to the Bible, I am perfect. Hey, everybody listen. Experience. 
people. I never claim I'm perfect. And I will never be perfect. Because the Bible is so bad, so much that I have to learn. Until the day that I leave this world, I will still have to learn. But all these preachers, they think they are all perfect. When they are asked, not one ever, uh, I used to say, ask that question, is the name of your church in the Bible? They never give me a right answer. But recently, in recent a few years, I have to say a few of them answer when I know. But to the Korean preachers, I have yet to see or hear a Korean preacher willing to say, somebody smoking out there? I smell smoking, cigarette smoking. <coughs> okay. Uh, it is a, it is <coughs> okay. It is a surprise to me. <coughs> I always see to know the scripture according to what is right, uh, what it what it was written. It's a surprise to me for myself because I know not much the Greek Bible, and this become my advantage. My professor. When I was in Ebling Christian University, my professor tried to train me to be good in Bible Greek. Due to circumstances, I failed to be one because Bible Greek was not essential courses required by the master degree that I was taken. But uh, so I, because nobody helped me. I have to feed my family, I have to pay my tuition, so I have to work so hard and study so hard. I have two sets of clothing. One set to go to the, to the library to study. One set go to work to feed my family and myself. So I do not have that much energy. And this Greek Bible Greek is not essential. So after one semester, I had to quit. I ap apologized to my professor. He was so gracious. And she did his best, his best to help me. Give me the dictionary and how to self-learn. Uh, but uh, I was not successful. I was not good in Greek, in Bible Greek. And suddenly, I found that became my advantage. Uh, this became my advantage in discovering original meaning of the Bible. So sometimes when you fail something, don't be disappointed. As what I especially you young people, as for myself, now I feel that I was blessed, that I was blessed because I did not have time to uh, become good in Bible Greek. Good in Bible Greek will naturally translate this word in 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 4 into genealogies. If I was good in Bible Greek, I would translate this word into genealogy. This word first meaning is genealogy. When you look at the new at the dictionary, you know that the first line came up the meaning of the word genealogy. Oh, that is why all the English Bible and Chinese Bible they took this one because they are good in Bible Greek. If I was good in Bible Greek, that's what I would translate to because I'm good. But because I'm not good, so. For me, I'm not good in Greek, so I have to look up until I discover my dictionary came up with came up with First Timothy one four. I have to read down the lines until I see this, then I settle. 
because I'm not good in Greek. And this is how I was able to discover the word Gnostics. Okay? This time it was easy because only six lines, six short lines, not long lines. You can have one line but long. <laughs> this, this, this long. The word is little, okay? Very small print. But only line six, when I come down, down to line six, the first line is the word genealogy. But after I read down to line six, I found this word, the doctrine of the Gnostics. And then follow it, 1 Timothy 1 4. Then I said to him, at 1 Timothy 1 4, uh, this picture over here. <clears throat> so it's a word, nothing. Then I, I'm not sure about the word, nothing. And then I went Google search. Nothing means what? Personal interpretation. Then the wonderful thing is, I discovered this. After I discovered this one, nothing, the doctrine of personal interpretation. In 1 Timothy chapter 4, uh, chapter 1, verse 4, because I'm not good in uh, <coughs> I'm not good in Greek, Bible Greek. Because Gnostic is the meaning I found is personal interpretation, <coughs> personal understanding. For <coughs> so in this verse. <coughs> Uh, as an adventurous, I have to start command Gnostic to stop. Okay? Because this Gnostic can, then can argue people to death. In this wise, everybody better recognize I'm expert. John Chen is expert. To make any, everyone aggravated to I don't want the bad one. Okay. <laughs> I'm an expert in this one. I'm not good in Greek, but an expert in nothing. I always have something to say. <clears throat> it's not good in the church. In Italy, I know these people will cause disorder in the church. Must be stopped. That's why it must be stopped. Then I found this one. This is to my surprise. Up to today, right now. I don't know how did I find it. Then I found Apostle Peter wrote this. Second Peter chapter 1, 20 to 21. Second Peter chapter 1, 20 to 21. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of scripture is of private interpretation. Perfect fit. See, this piece and that piece together fit perfectly. But the point is, how did I do this? I still do not understand. But the fact is laid out here, right here. I found it. First Timothy chapter one verse four should so link up with Second Peter chapter one twenty to twenty one. Knowing this first, no prophecy of Scripture is of private interpretation. For no prophecy ever came by the will of man, but man spoke from God, being moved by the Holy Spirit. The NIV said, carried along by the Holy Spirit. Moved, carried along by the Holy Spirit. Okay? No scripture ever came by the will of man. No prophecy of scripture is of private interpretation. See that? Perfect. It fit perfectly together. Why nothing had to be stopped? Because nothing will create questioning, questioning, create disorder, disorder, make people fall away, devoted people fall away. That's why nothing had to be stopped. And then, this is my surprise also. I still do not know how did I do that. I've discovered Second Peter chapter 1, verse 20 and 21. 
it says no prophecy. See that? No prophecy of the scripture is of private interpretation. You cannot say, I think, I, I thought, according to what I know, this is it. You cannot do that. <clears throat> and he said, for no prophecy ever came by the will of man, but man spoke from God, be moved by the Holy Spirit, carried along by the Holy Spirit. So definitely at this time, for myself, it's a realistic, realistic happening that the Holy Spirit carried along that I found these two fit, fit together. And I still do not know why and how that I did it. But I did it. Okay? I share it today. Now, example one, the understanding chapter, John chapter three. How they understand John chapter three? European theologian came up with this simple statement, faith in Jesus alone saves souls in the world. Faith alone saves souls in the world. Jesus will save faith alone. Okay? This is how they sum up their personal interpretation. European theologian collectively for hundreds of years. They came up with this statement, faith alone with Jesus will save you. Then <coughs> they advocated using John 3.16 and John 3.36 as central message in John chapter 3. Okay? They use this, <coughs> this is their personal interpretation. For God, this is a correct translation from English, okay? For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him will not perish, but have everlasting life, or eternal life, okay? I use it to uh, memorize everlasting life. But eternal life is shorter, okay? Everlasting and eternal. Same thing. So they summarize together with these two verses at center, so they came up, faith alone with Jesus saved you. And then 36, he that believes on the Son has eternal, this one, everlasting life. And he that believes not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides on him. This is, this two scripture, they based on their statement. This is their personal interpretation. Unfortunately, their personal interpretation was wrong because I discovered and I lay out for you today. You are very blessed to be here. We, the Church of Christ, we take it this way. I make it very clear. We don't say, I think, that's what it says. We don't think. We go to the scripture. <coughs> Let us go to Acts chapter 2, 36 to 38, and see what Peter interpret. John 3, chapter 3, 1 to 36, the whole chapter. Jesus, as I say, Jesus taught it in the classroom. Peter practiced it on the field. Okay? How did he interpret? Jesus was, uh, Peter was right there with Jesus. And Peter was carried along by the Holy Spirit to preach that first sermon on the day of the Church of Christ opening day, Acts chapter 2. That was the Church of Christ inauguration day, Acts chapter 2. And Peter delivered the message, taught by Jesus Christ in John chapter 3. Hey, Peter, got it down? We don't say, we don't say, wrote, read the whole chapter, study the whole chapter, read the whole chapter. And they say, we think, summarize together, simple statement, faith alone, salvation. We don't do it that way. We do it this way. Let's go to ask Peter. Peter was there with Jesus. Peter was filled with the Holy Spirit. He was controlled. He was a what? Dull-headed man. 
Z, remember? He was a tall headed man, D U L L. But he was carried along, moved by the Holy Spirit. And that's how he understands, how he interpreted. God and I, that's what we do it this way. Let the scripture interpret the scripture. Let Jesus do the interpretation. Let Peter do the interpretation. Let what says in the Bible. That's how we do it. <clears throat> now, this firing will help us to see God is right now living within us. Right here, God is living within us. This is in this place. And I'm very happy these two young girls is here. Before they here. Oh, they want to hear? Very good. That's it. Okay. Learn it very well. Okay. You're young with a mind. Remember it. Now, here with the most important part. Isaiah chapter 28, 13. This one I remember. I remember for a long, long time. This is jigsaw part, uh, jigsaw puzzle. Therefore shall the word of the Lord, Jehovah, be unto them precept upon precept. Precept upon precept is a repeat. Line upon line, line upon line. Here a little, there a little, that they may go and fall backward. Be broken, snared, taken. Horrible. Very, very horrible. But this helps us to know the truth in the Bible is presented to us as a big bucket of pieces. Jigsaw, puzzle pieces. Jigsaw, puzzle pieces. Do you have this kind of game at home? Jigsaw, puzzle pieces. But I don't think you have a big bucket one. I have seen on TV, okay, a family and the father pull out a big bucket of pieces, a jigsaw puzzle, and he give them each one a picture. Now, look up the pieces and they fix the picture. And line the picture, fit, fit them out together and come up the picture, jigsaw puzzle. Sometimes it takes them a whole day to find just, just a final piece and put it together. <clears throat> the, the pieces is all, the, all there in that back bucket to come up like a sermon, as a picture. You know, come up like today, have these pieces together. Here a little, there a little, they may go and fall backward and be broken and snared and taken. Isaiah chapter 28, verse 13. Very bad. These people were bad. They are still bad. Now, do you believe who is elected president of America? Joe Biden. Right? President Donald J. Trump lost. Here, I have no comment. Like my, I'm preaching what, what says in the Bible. My job is presented as it was written. I'm just saying reality that I see with my own eyes. President Donald Trump helped Israel, the Jews, a lot more than help the Palestinian. <coughs> he moved the capital uh, to Jerusalem. He led Israel and its west side of Jordan. I mean, he one-sided favor Israel. But you know, two very big daily enemy devote their whole life to bring down President Donald Trump, New York 
Chuck Schumer, Senator, a Jews, Jews. Bloomberg spent hundreds, hundreds with S, million, hundreds million in Florida to help Joe Biden beat Donald Trump, a Jew. Two big Jews. Donald Trump, deadly political enemy. I just present the fact, okay? President Trump favor Jews, one-sided. But Jews become his deadly enemy in politics. Reality, okay? No comment. Now I can understand why such a perfect man in Jesus, they nailed him to the cross. Why such a powerful, perfect picture, preacher, Apostle Paul, they get him killed. Now you can see and understand. You can help the Jews so much. The Jews who has the power still be your daily enemy to destroy you in politics. Hey, everybody learned that. Remember. This is a fact in today's world. Right? Display in front of me. But by the grace of God, my dream is fulfilled. I was granted. Whatever happened to my life, I was granted to discover as it was written and presented to you, you are very, very blessed. God is alive right here. And help us to recognize I'm still written, I'm, I'm, try, I'm still to come uh, to uh, finish my next Bible study, my next week's sermon. Man created equal? What a big question mark. Are men created equal? Think about that. Okay. <clears throat> the Bible is a big bucket of jigsaw puzzle piece. Uh, yes, it's like working on a jigsaw puzzle game. The Bible is a big bucket of uh, puzzle game pieces. You have so many pieces. You pull a big bucket of pieces. Tell your children. Maybe someday your children will do that to them. If you have 12 children, hey, see, some people have 12, 114, 39 wife, African jungle somewhere. You read that? Gordon. A man, 39 wife, 114 children. You need a big bucket. You go down there and fix a big puzzle. <coughs> to form a picture, one has to find all the fitting pieces and fit them together to come up with a picture. Now you know what it takes to know Bible 2 correctly. Too bad. I put in what I met. I behold in what is in front of me. All these Korean preachers. They all think they are perfect, but they are all different from each other. How can they be perfect in Bible 2? And the next pastor is so different from him, and he is, Bible two. he is perfect in Bible 2. How can two perfect in Bible 2 be different? They never talk to them. Then a scripture came up in his head. I think it's John chapter 12. Do you have, have this word D E A D E N E D? Dead, dead, dead. The peace in their head that was able to understand the truth in the Bible, dead, dead, dead. and God made it dead. dead. 
ก็เนาะ you can go to if you want to find a word Peter go to NIV and then write the word take the text and you will come up chapter John chapter 12 somewhere when the peace in their mind that were able to understand the truth in the Bible God make it dead then they have no chance to understand that's why when I was a teenager I was able I was wondering I wonder how why they all have the same Bible same translation and they all claim they say they preach the cultural Bible why are they different it should be all the, all be the same then in my classroom the, the teacher has a picture right out there every student we have 45 students have to draw that picture and give present it to him and then we the teacher greet it you know how the how the teacher greet the greet your paper the one who like the what similar okay the more have a higher grade right Audrey if you display a horse you draw like a chicken what what grade can you get huh what grade can you get a D or an F well yeah, if the picture is a horse you 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 come up with a picture of a chicken how can you be, how can people be so dumb? I want to need to understand. I well I they they all have so much confidence. They are Bible expert, expert, expert. How are they different? Because the peace that they are able to understand has been deadened and God made it deadened. Wonder no more. Why European theologian hundred fifty uh fifteen hundred years? cannot understand the Bible correctly. European theologian can never understand the word works in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 9. They cannot understand Ephesians chapter 2 verse 9. We are saved by grace through faith not by works lest people be proud break about their work because they are good that's why they are saved not because of that it's by grace through faith okay not by works that's what Ephesians chapter 2 verse 9 <clears throat> if I tell them they should feed another piece from Romans chapter 3 verse 20 they will still do not understand first they will not take it because me John Chen to them he said nothing and they will then compare, if they have to compare to me, they're everything and nothing. Why do everything listen to a nothing? It's nonsense also. So even if I tell them, they will not listen. That's why they have no chance. Because Romans chapter 3 verse 20 will tell them that works, not by works. That work means what? Follow, practice, Ten Commandments, Old Testament law. We are saved by the grace through faith in Jesus Christ. Do what Christ said, not by doing what the law says. Romans chapter 3 verse 20. We understand, but they do not. To prove that we are really safe, we have to have lively livelihood. Okay? We have to have the evidence of being alive. Okay? Living as a Christian, as someone who follows Jesus Christ. Like today, why are we here? Because we believe Jesus. We practice Hebrew chapter 10, verse 25 to 29. That's why we are here. Hebrew chapter 10, 25 to 29. See, we do it this way. Not on Saturday. Saturday is according to Ten Commandment number 4. Ten Commandment number 4, you have to do sacrifice 
on Saturday for revision of your sin. <coughs> Ephesians chapter 2 verse 9. See here. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 9. The word is Old Testament worship God on Saturday. Here it says, we do not, we are not saved by doing the work of the Old Testament. We will be saved by doing what Jesus commanded. Okay? They will not understand this. They faint and fall face up <coughs> when they see this big bucket, chisel, parcel pieces. They pull up their faith. Okay? Fall backward. Don't try here, okay? Maybe when you go to the beach, on the sand, okay? On the sand beach, you can try to practice fall backward. What does that mean? The smaller better, okay? The taller people may still get hurt. You want to be careful. Like one, like <coughs> the October 28, 2020, President of France said, I do not know what to do with this spreading of COVID-19. No, he was honest. And he was able to say, I don't know what to do. That's why I sh shut down Paris for a month. Because I don't know what to do. I shut down. Remember, he, have you read the news? He announced it. I don't know what to do. Okay? That's why Paris shut down for a month. I cannot imagine. Well, we have been shut down for uh, three months. Peter, remember we, we got shut down about three months? Maybe they should shut down half a year. Hey, Christina, call him. You should shut down Paris three or four half a year, six months. Wise theologian will say, we do not know what to do with this bucket of chicho, puzzle, pieces. We don't know what to do with it. Let's go ask those who are in the Church of Christ. If they're smart, they should go ask Church of Christ. If you're in Italy, you look around Church of Christ, a few people, we have thousands. What is these people? They know, they know whether they will do. They become like that. I remember when Grace, our youngest daughter, went to Italy. To study some of those uh, ancient architects. <clears throat> the first Sunday, he looked up the Church of Christ. He was asked to teach the children class over there. So you know how many Bible teachers they have. When Grace was first visited there, they asked her to teach Bible class, children Bible class. Conclusion now, this is wonderful to me. For I make known to you, brethren, as touching the gospel which I was I preached by me, that it was not after man. Listen, Apostle Paul make it very clear. The gospel I preached is not after man. For neither did I receive it from man, nor was I taught it, but through a revelation of Jesus Christ. Remember, today I say what? But through the scripture in black ink on white paper. <coughs> Thank God I'm not expert in Bible Greek. I have to look up dictionary, match word for word to discover. Everybody knows that. In open, I use a dictionary. And I have to match word with words. <clears throat> Think twice on the Chinese translation. The Chinese translation may be wrong in here. See here, watch the underline. The Chinese translation is not people, not other people told me. But the Chinese is said what? I told it myself. Okay? The gospel I preach is not people taught me, received from other people. Or I did not teach it myself. It's through a revelation of Jesus Christ. 
Yeah, today here in England, we do not have that. For I did not receive it from men, nor was I taught it. You see, I did not come up myself. It came through the revelation of Jesus Christ. Why must we see Bible 2 as if written? Like as a drug or a medicine specially designed to cure a certain sickness. We always seek for the originally made one. That's why we always say, even in China, there are lots of medicine. But they feel saved to buy the same kind of medicine in, China, in America, then marry it back. It does happen. Okay, this is about body life or death, but saving the soul is eternal life. So it is why it's so important that we have to have the original meaning of the Bible, because our soul is eternal. It's a special job or medicine to help the soul to live eternally. Much better than the special job designed for some kind of illnesses. Uh, Peter, for closing prayer.